Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dying Chronic, you're here on this Destiny 2 video and today we're we'll taking a look at a PvP Arc Stag Warlock build that's doing incredibly well in Trials of Osiris and all of Crucible. In a nutshell, again, it is an Arc subclass of Tomb of Elements, which is Bottom Tree Arc, with the Stag helmet that was reworked and a lot better than before using the No Time to Explain or Dead Man's Tail, which allows you to win most primary ammo gunfights because of your innate advantage. And a big thank you to my buddy Beowulf, who actually designed this build and got the gameplay in the background. Without him, I would have had to do a lot more work, so big thank you to him. Link to his Twitch is down below. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started with these specs. First up, the class and subclass is going to be Warlock Arc Attunement of Elements, which again is the Bottom Tree Arc. With that, I like using Healing Rift with either Storm Grenade or Arc Bolt Grenade. I like Storm Grenade because it does the most damage, and then of course, Burst Glide. When it comes to the weapons of choice for my primary weapon, No Time to Explain or Dead Man's Tail, really up to you, but we are building this build around No Time to Explain and Pulse Rifles. After that, you probably want a shotgun like Felwinter's Lie, Sojourner's Duality, but 72 RPM snipers do work well with Empowering Rifts, and the Heavy is really up to you, so I recommend Commemoration, Interference, and of course, if you are not using an Exotic for Primary, Orc of Coil. Up next, let's talk about the armor, which is oftentimes the most important part of any build. Now, the general idea in this armor build is going to be improving your recovery, intellect, discipline, melee, and pulse shotgun. Depending on your weapon choice, that may change, but for the most part, it is kind of up to you to build it in the exact way how you want to build it. On screen right now is how we personally built it based on our stat distribution, so yours is going to differ, make decisions accordingly. If you don't have a lot of recovery in your gear, you may want to try to swap stuff out to get more recovery in there. When it comes to the stats you're looking for, something like Recovery 9+, Intellect 7+, Resilience at 5, Discipline 5+, and then Strength and Mobility is up to you. Outside of that, obviously the exotic choice is going to be the Stag, which works very well in Trials, helps your teammates revive you because it puts a rift on your corpse, gives you class ability faster, and of course the resistance in your rift is just really nice outside of that for the seasonal stuff we did use a standard high energy fire taking charge with some other things as well and then the rest should be pretty straightforward up next let's talk about the gameplay of the build to reiterate a few things this is primarily a defensive build based on using your damage resistance in a rift and your arc buddies to lock down important parts of the map while holding lanes and control points i generally try to push the key points of the map and set up a rift near cover with the combination of peak shooting from cover healing from my rift and the damage resistance i can usually win primary gunfights with anyone if no one is pushing, I feel more confident pushing forward with my arc buddy at my side. And with a combination of the stag's perk that gives you close to a quarter of your rift energy when you get critically wounded, and running double utility kickstart, you can usually have your rift up almost all the time. And since you're putting down so many rifts, this build can accommodate aggressive pushes by providing the whole team with an arc buddy to give them the damage they need to win a fight. When it comes to your weapon, specifically your primary weapon choice, it depends greatly on what map you're playing on. I've found that running no time to explain in conjunction with healing rift provides provides great dueling potential. This is because of the rewind rounds perk, no time to explain stacks with arc buddies, and gives you two small turrets that really put on a lot of damage. And the great other perk about these automated turrets is they can often spot enemies right before you can. It'll shoot in the direction that you need to pay attention to. Notice how I said rewind rounds, not rewind rounds. <laughs> Alternatively, if you're playing on a map with longer lanes, Dead Man's Tail run with an Empowering Rift is a deadly combo, which allows the DMT to two-tap Guardians and extends the kill range of your special weapon like your shotgun. If you're more in the mood for sniping, the Empowering Rift also allows your 72 RPM snipers to one-shot enemy Guardians with a 5 resilience or lower. And of course, again, like I said before, the heavy is really up to you which one you like better. Up next, let's talk about the alternatives to this build. There are a few alternatives to your weapons and your armor mods. Firstly, you can use many different weapons and weapon types. I chose No Time to Explain a Dead Man's Tale as they're very strong in the current meta and have cheap armor mods from the artifact. Just make sure you make the appropriate armor mod changes. Your subclass cannot really be changed. It is built around the subclass's abilities and strengths. If you're going to change the subclass, you might as well change the entire build. Most of the other stuff is going to be pretty straightforward. Forward. Your grenade can be changed to what you like, although I like Storm Grenade for the most damage. Your jump can be changed, but Burst is going to be the most advantageous for chasing enemies down and escaping. For the exotic choices, you do have a lot of different choices in 6 v 6 game modes. Maybe Aeon Soul, Getaway Artist, Boots of the Assembler, lots of different options there. General PvP, Ophidius Spade, Transversives are always going to be great, but the stag is kind of the basis of what we're trying to do here. And finally, when it comes to counters, the most common counter to this build is going to be using abilities to deny your rift. Something like Mask of Bacchus Shatter Diving Hunters are going to be your worst enemies as they can simply blink in, shut you down whenever you try to place a rift. 
Another big counter is going to be Risk Runner, which has gained a lot of popularity in actually countering this build specifically. The arc buddy on your shoulder will actually proc the arc conductor perk on the Risk Runner and turns the gun into a laser beam while simultaneously making the Guardian much tankier. Which is why we don't use first and last out or sudden death shotguns because they're both arc. And maybe interference sticks is also a bad idea. <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it. And that is going to be pretty much the end of the video. Make sure you check out my other builds that I have on my channel. I have a whole playlist, Destiny 2 builds, so go check that out. A lot of them are older builds, but still apply to a lot of the gameplay we see now. And if you guys like this video, I could make more builds in the future. Please let me know. And of course, a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon for helping out videos like this. Specifically, a big thank you to Mom and Dad, Dr. Strange, Kelly Allen, Joe Smith, Monday, Steve Bachman, Raymond Shonen, and Panther, Casey Reagan for the support on Patreon. And that's it. Hope you guys did enjoy. My name is Zenarchronic, and I'll see you guys on the next one.